One of the exciting regional opportunities is our nearest neighbour, Papua New Guinea. Undoubtedly an exceptionally resource-rich country and undoubtedly underexplored and perhaps under, uh, misunderstood or under-understood. It presents many exciting opportunities. So I hope you have your sunscreen, uh, I hope you have uh, your malaria tablets. Uh, we're going to go on a fascinating tour of exciting opportunities in Papua New Guinea. First, to give us an overview of the outlook for Papua New Guinea, uh, next speaker is from CSA Global, the leading mining industry consultants. Our speaker is an experienced geologist um, with experience right across this region. From CSA, CSA Global, please welcome Patrick Mayer. Patrick. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I suppose my outlook for PNG will be very much focused on the exploration and, and mining side of things um, in, the, in the junior sector. Um, I'd like to just generally open by um, focusing on some of the economic side of, of, of things in PNG. Um, just have a, a quick look at how PNG ranks in the exploration stakes in Southeast Asia. Um, I'd like to move on then and talk some serious stuff around geology uh, in PNG because uh, it's a fascinating place when you're exploring and it's, it's got some amazing potential. So I'd like to touch on that for a few minutes. And then, um, as a, I suppose, a segue, uh, look at very, very quickly some of the, the projects that will be coming up after me and we'll, we'll, we'll finish it out at that. Um, just a little quick thing about CSA Global, I suppose we've been around for 35 years in the mining industry. Um, we have had a, a lot of experience in, in PNG over the last uh, 20 years and a lot of our, our colleagues, there's one here in the audience today, Graham Jeffers, has worked in PNG on various projects, especially in the Highlands. Um, we've also done a lot of work on the, on the islands, mostly looking at structural geology and looking at targeting studies and things like that. Um, but I suppose just getting a, a feeling from earlier this morning about what's happening in the, the junior industry at the moment and in the investment community and the mining side. It's, um, if, if we're a gauge of uh, how we're tracking at the moment, we're exceptionally busy on the independent technical assessment reporting, which is required for IPO documents. Since Christmas, we've actually been involved in eight projects, which uh, two or three have already listed on the ASX. And if that's a gauge, of what's happening right now, it's, it's, it's starting. It's getting really, really busy again. On to Papua New Guinea. Uh, for those people um, who, I suppose, don't know much about Papua New Guinea, it's, uh, it, it, it's a pretty spread out uh, island nation and uh, I suppose quite close to us, probably our nearest neighbour here in Australia. Um, it's, it's a fascinating place in, in regional context. Um, it's got, a, 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 I suppose, a rural population. Um, looking at just some of the, the towns and, and cities, you've uh, here Port Moresby, you've got Leigh. Um, but most of the people living in the Highlands and here around New Ireland, New Britain, um, it's, it's quite a spread out place. And for people that want to go and explore there, They've got to be ready to do the hard yards. It's not an easy environment, especially uh, in the mountainous regions and the highlands. Um, it takes a, a lot of effort, a lot of logistical brilliance at times to get things done. Um, but for those people who are willing to get out there and push hard in Papua New Guinea, talk to the local people, get on with the government agencies, um, the rewards are there. Just quickly on the demographic side of Papua New Guinea. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a country that's pretty stable. It's, it's a country that um, depends a lot on exports. And I've just pulled up uh, this data here because I just want to focus on the, the export of goods. Um, actually, most of the goods that are exported out of PNG um, relate to mining oil and gas. So they, they really depend on the mining industry uh, to, to to generate a, a GDP. Papua New Guinea's place in the, in the world in the great scheme of things, well, look, it's, it's a small country. It's got a fairly sizable population, 8 million people. Um, but when you put it in the, the great scheme of things, in the context of, of the rest of the world, um, I won't say it pales into ins insignificance, but it, it's a small player. Just looking at its... Um, relationship to the other countries that uh, 
we classify them in the Pacific Southeast Asia region. Um, it's, it's up there in terms of exploration spending. Um, I take a lot of my data from the SNL database, and they keep close tabs on most of the companies that are exploring in the Southeast Asia region. And it's, um, I suppose it's reassuring to see that Papua New Guinea um, is up there in, in second place and um, really only beaten by Indonesia last year uh, in terms of ex exploration expenditure. Um, it's not massive amounts of money that are being spent on exploration over there. Um, if, if you look at the chart, you, you can see about 74.4 million US dollars. You know, if you put it in the Australian context, again, it fails into insignificance. But for the amount of money that's been spent um, in Papua New Guinea over the last five, ten years, um, the rewards have been quite, quite good. Just bringing the exploration focus home, um, you know, it's, it really is known for its rich gold and copper deposits. Um, as I mentioned, it, it has topped the, the expenditure and exploration charts there for the last number of years, but um, also uh, the people in the government and PNG, they're, they're making a really concerted effort to look at mining policies and um, make them more friendly to become more globally competitive. So that's reassuring for anybody thinking about exploring in that part of the world. On the um, geologic, geological setting side, th this it's very, very important to look at where Papua New Guinea sits on the global tectonic scale. Um, I think most people in the room know a little bit about plate tectonics and the fact that you know, we, we're not sitting on stable land masses, even though we think we are. Uh, the Australian continent itself is, is moving ever so slowly to the north. And we also have this amazing Pacific plate, which is mostly covered by, by ocean, of course. But where the Pacific plate and the Australian plate meet, a lot of interesting things happen. And this is a, a very, very important part of the exploration game, is to understand uh, what happens when these two plates hit each other and how they can create amazing mineral deposits. When we look at Papua New Guinea and the, the three different geological sections that we need to concentrate on, um, I suppose broadly, and this is very broadly speaking now as a geologist, we, we can break them up into three main domains. One is actually still part of the old Australian continent of what we call the Australian Craton, and it's this uh, yellow area down here on the south of Papua New Guinea. In the middle spine section, uh, you're looking at what we call the, the New Guinea origin, which is a, a mountainous chain which, which runs right down the, sp the spine of, of, of Papua New Guinea, and as you can see, leads over there to, to Woodlark Islands and also El Misima, um, and that's important. We'll talk about that later in a few moments. Also to the north is the Melanesian Arc. Um, this is a, a geological region which is mostly, I suppose, focused on volcanic eruptions and volcanic activity. Um, also, interestingly, in these regions, um, we find gold deposits. Just summing up there, you know, it has long been cited, Papua New Guinea is a a classical setting for what are known as uh, porphyry and epithermal deposits. And simply put, porphyry deposits are um, formed from magmas that have, you know, been pieces of the crust of the earth have been subsumed under the earth, even even into, into phenomenal depths. Rocks melt, granites rise, and um, along these areas, you find some fantastic mineral systems developing. Um, and some, as I said, porphyry deposits and epithermal deposits, uh, the hunting ground for these is around these potential pl plate tectonic areas. Um, also, just looking at the age of a lot of the deposits that we find in the rocks that are in, in Papua New Guinea, most of them are quite recent in world geological history. Um, the stuff that we're looking at is around 23 million years to the, to the present day. So it's when you think about some of the things we look at in Western Australia that are 1.5 to 2 billion years old, what we see in Papua New Guinea is very, very young indeed. 
Also, it shouldn't be forgotten, it's not, it's not all about porphyry and epithermal deposits. Um, it's important to you know, just keep at the back of your mind that Papua New Guinea has the gas fields. Um, it also has nickel laterite deposits at Ramu. Um, and interestingly also, it's got coal deposits. And people go, what? Yes, there are, and I'll just mention that uh, later in my presentation. Um, so it's a, it's a mixed bag, but a very rich bag in Papua New Guinea. Just quickly to clue you in here, this is a busy slide, but what I want to uh, really talk to is, um, again, the mid-rib section of Papua New Guinea, uh, the mountainous areas and right out to the islands, and also this area here, and also this area up to the northwest, which we, sorry, the, the, on the northeast side here. Um, these islands host some phenomenally large deposits of, of gold, and what you're looking at here are deposits mostly of copper and gold. Just quickly to look at some of the mines uh, that have been found and established in some of the bigger deposits in Papua New Guinea. Some of them are quite famous. You may have heard of them. There's the Octedi government-owned copper mine up here. You've got Lahir, which is one of the most, I suppose, famous ones that has been discovered in the last 40, 50 years, and you know, looking out into the uh, island areas here, you've got Woodlark. We'll have a quick talk about that in a few moments. Just looking at, say, the top, and apologies, by the way, to um, anybody that's reading this and looks at what are termed uh, in situ values. Um, I know the people on Jark and Valman wouldn't be too happy with me quoting this publicly, but um, again, I'm using the SNL database, and they, they, they like to sift through most of their data in terms of value, and they use uh, in situ values as, as a way of doing that. But what's interesting is just the, in some of these um, statistics, it's just the phenomenal size of some of the deposits. If you see this one here at, uh, at Lahir, coming across over 50 million ounces of gold. I mean, that's, that's just incredible. And these type of deposits, um, when we get excited about them as geologists or as explorers, um, we, we, we call them elephants. And I just want to bring this up. There are, there are massive opportunities. And Papua New Guinea is a place that we still, well, we, we believe as geologists um, needs lots more exploring. And it has the potential to find these elephants, and I'm not talking about the animals, and simply saying that these supersized deposits, which we refer to as, as, as elephants, you know, they're, they're like the animals, they're, they're rare enough, they do come along every now and again, and you can find one, and that's the big prize in Papua New Guinea, it's finding one of these super deposits. Just quickly want to talk to the Kingston Resources story. Um, they've got the, the Miss Magol project. I've just highlighted that area there. I, I spoke earlier about that, that, that rim of, of deposits and line of deposits. Um, look, they're, they're, they're working hard at the moment. They've already got 2.8 million ounces of resources um, drilled out, and they're now testing for further uh, exploration targets, and we're all waiting to see what those results are going to be like in, in the weeks and, and months ahead. Um, interestingly enough, it, it, it's again um, one of the, f I suppose, first real campaigns over there in about 15 years. So we're waiting to, to hear some more successful stories from Kingston. With Geo Pacific Resources, I know the, the Woodlark Gold Project, um, we'll hear some more about it in more detail, but again, they're pushing really hard with you know, reserves there of over a million ounces. Um, Pre-feasibility study completed and a DFS is underway. So, um, and also, of course, further exploration drilling. I think once these guys figure out the geology of what they're, they're looking at, we could really, really hear some big results. I, that's what I'm hoping anyway. With Numenco, um, they've got some interesting ground um, up there. In, close to the highlands. Um, they've got the Mayor River project, um, they've got the Bullabit project. Both are close to some really, really well-known and large deposits and mines that are already working. And also, they're, they're, they're in the mining game at the moment at, at Edie Creek, so we, um, we're hoping um, that that will progress uh, to, to bigger stuff as well. Just finally, I, I want to mention a bit about um, uh, Bougainville. It's, uh, 
an island, an autonomous region uh, to the to the, the northeast. Um, it's possibly one of the last uh, undeveloped mineralized regions in the world. And again, another area we think that there's a possibility that we'd find another one of these elephants. Just quickly, um, talking about the, the Calia Limited work that's, that's happening up there, it's very, very early stage exploration. Um, and I know you'll hear a bit more about what's happening. But uh, interestingly, to the south there, you've got the Panguna deposit. Uh, which uh, definitely is a, is a massive one, and I suppose if, if one was to look to the to the north there, you can see some similarities in the geology. It's just worth chasing. Just one other quick one on coal. Um, I, I mentioned it's it's one that's often overlooked in Papua New Guinea, but there's a company there, Mayor Resources, who who've got a number of different um, projects on the go at the moment. Um, but they're actually looking at at coal down there in the Gulf region, um, and they've they've proved up Jork Resources there at the moment, and they're looking to uh, to help out in, in the the story of power and power generation in Papua New Guinea as well. So. Just to sum up, um, in my opinion, the outlook is extremely positive for investment for anybody that's looking in Papua New Guinea. It's, it has a proven track record. Um, over the last number of weeks and months, um, I've been tracking with the, the mining news people, you know, some of the stories that are coming out. Um, you know, a lot of money being raised for, for these projects. Um, I just happened to pick up on Kingston there and also uh, around Mayor. So there's, you know, there's a lot of people already getting in on these uh, potential Top class projects, um, and I just mentioned Highland Pacific there as well. You know they're they're getting some phenomenal results on drilling that they're doing in in the Highlands. That's really my assessment and outlook of Papua New Guinea. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation, and thank you very much. <laughs>